You know, I like to say this, Austin, I'm a true cowboy, not because I've never ridden a horse in my life, but I have ridden more cows. <laughs> I have literally, I've literally mounted bareback cows and ridden them, but I've never ridden a horse in my life, but I like to consider myself a true cowboy. You know Listen, what I mean? Makes when these when these music days are over, all right, <laughs> many years in the future, maybe <sighs> you just start a cow riding business. That's right. Everybody Praise got God. horseback riding, but cowback Praise, riding. Praise God. I can see, yeah, and I could see myself out there in the corral looking at my watch going, <laughs> well, I've been waiting all day for somebody to show up and ride. <laughs> Ain't nobody. <laughs> nobody nobody, nobody, nobody wants to ride a cow. <laughs> They're too slow, Austin. I think it's like... <laughs> We're here today with Ben Fuller of BenFullerOfficial.com here on Behind the Tunes. Ben, thanks so much for hanging out today, man. Oh my goodness. I can't believe that you had me on this thing. Oh, I mean, get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. Get out of town. Get I'm out of blessed. Town. I'm yeah. blessed right now. <laughs> but listen, now I want to go back to your, your days growing up for a second. You're from yeah. Vermont. Yeah. All right. Southern Vermont? Southern Vermont. Yeah. If Where, that's Southern. I mean, can Vermont even be Southern? Right. Right. You in the South now, man. That's what, right. What part of Vermont were you from? Were you from? Um, so, so a small town called Perkinsville, Vermont, and uh, it's like two hours south of Burlington. Okay. Um, everybody, when I say Vermont, people are like, "Oh, I know Burlington, like you know, Lake Champlain, or you know, whatever." If they do, but, but most people are just like, "Is that by Canada?" <laughs> so you know, it's all good. It's all relative. It depends on what That's you're right. comparing to. Well, you know, I so I had, I had family that went up and planted a church in Montpelier. And so yeah. I went up for a number of years there to Montpelier to just do different things, try to support them and cruising along the way. And so yeah. Vermont's a fascinating, the fascinating world. But yeah. you were you grew up on a dairy farm there? Yeah. Yeah. Believe it. Yeah. We had a hundred uh, 170 Holstein cows. And uh, my dad, the black and white ones, and my dad just, my dad always wanted to be a dairy farmer. And so I got, uh, I just got brought into it, you know, and I was, um, I have a, a sister, but other than that, I was a boy. And so, you know, it just, I sometimes, some days I wish my dad had had some more sons to take a little, <laughs> to take a little more of the heat and a little more load off my back. But it honestly, um, yeah, it was a lot, it was a lot of work. Was yeah. Lot I have a buddy, sure. I have a buddy here in, in Memphis uh, or South of Memphis that he grew up on a dairy farm and just the story that, you know, he'd be like, I can't stay out too late tonight. I get, I gotta get home. I gotta yeah. get up in the morning, and milk the cow, yeah. you know, or he would leave 100%. like super early in the morning to get home in time to, so I know man, that's a, that's a tough life, man. But it's, uh, yeah, it is. Well, yeah. so, so you grew up in, in Vermont and you are in Nashville these days. How did yeah. you get yourself from Southern Vermont to Nashville? Um, so basically, uh, I think my first show, ever i I'd, I'd always i've always been a singer you know like i've always loved to sing i've always loved to um the music would take me out of the place that i was in um if i was feeling low or feeling mad or upset you know i could sing and somehow it would it would always it would always provide this relief you know and um i i found myself i think my first show was february 25th 2017 okay in nash in uh, in vermont sorry and so a bunch of my friends showed up, a bunch of people came out as this little dive bar and um, it word just started spreading. It was like, Hey, Ben played this bar and uh, it was good. And so we, you know, like, let's, let's have him at our bar. Let's have him at our restaurant. Let's have him at our. So I started playing live music in Vermont and New Hampshire um, in 2017. And then uh, uh, for a whole year, I guess. And then the fall of 2018, um, is when I started hearing from people like, dude, you got to go, like, you got to move, you should go to Nashville, because you could, you could make it, you know, like, you're, you're good enough to make it. And so yeah, I sold my house in the fall of 2018. And um, I move, it sold in one day. And the woman that bought it was from Nashville, Tennessee. Really? I was like, it was like 20 hours away. You know, I was like, what? I was like, that's kind of, <laughs> I was like, that's pretty crazy. But I, uh, so I moved down in the fall of 2018. And it just, um, I was terrified. Dude, every every single star from every single hometown who can sing way better than me is there 
And they're like all trying to get noticed and seen and heard. And it's like, I was overwhelmed. I was like, what am I even doing down here? You know? Um, so it, it was scary. I got a job working at Broadway and yeah. uh, at Tootsie's. I played yeah. Tootsie's for a whole, for a whole year down there. And um, I got in the first week that I was there, I got told that, you know, I could go do an interview there at two o'clock in the afternoon on Saturday and I could sing and, I think I did queen in my double wide trailer or something. And, uh, they, they hired me on the spot. They're like, awesome. We'll see you tomorrow morning. It was in a, a Sunday morning. I started playing at Tootsie's at 10 AM and, uh, I would do the 10, 10 AM to 2 PM shift. And, uh, most days, cause I'm, I'm a morning guy from the farm, yeah. you know? And so I was like, so yeah, then that just led to a whole year of me playing Broadway, um, yeah. which is, it's just, some people love it, but, um, I was just like, I kind of got lost down there, you know? Mm. So, so you, you're playing Tootsies. You're playing all throughout. And so and that was country music, right? You're pursuing yeah. that point. Yeah. So obviously you're, you're not in that world anymore. Yeah. Where, at what point did the shift from Tootsies and country music to the Ben Fuller that we know today, when did that happen? Yeah. So I was, uh, so one, so I played, played Broadway for a whole year. And then, uh, in the fall, it was, it was in the fall of 2019. Uh, I was, I remember I was driving home one day and, uh, uh, I lived in cool Springs, which is like 26 minutes or so, uh, from Broadway. And, um, I was driving home. I got a phone call from this family, um, from Vermont. And, uh, and I, and I answered it, didn't have their number, but I answered anyway. And they're like, Hey, this is the Davenport family. You may remember us. We came to some of your shows uh, in Vermont. We know you're here in Nashville. We're here too. Do you want to come over for dinner? And I was like, you know, like I don't turn down meals, you know, I'm like, sure. You know, I'm hungry. I got to eat. So I was like, sure, let's go. And so I, I went there that night and uh, God, I didn't even realize, but, but um, they told me the story and they, they said that they moved down here um, about a year ago. And a year before I moved down there and uh, 2017 and, and they, God moved them down there. They, they felt led down there by God um, to go to church. And uh, so then sparked this conversation. And all of a sudden at the end of the meal, they asked me if I'd like to go to church with them the next morning. And uh, it was a Saturday night. And, um, and I think I said, yes, with my mouth full, you know, like I was just like, sure. You know, you guys fed me. You guys, you guys helped me. Like, at least I can do is I've always loved people. You know, I was like, the least I can do is go to church with you guys and, and, uh, come see what it's all about. And mind you, Vermont is 2% Christian. And, uh, you know, the only time I've been to church is for funerals and weddings. Yep. And, um, so I, I went to church of the city, 3000 people. Um, and it was in the, in the late fall, two, 2019. Mm -hmm. And, um, I just remember like walking into that place and like everybody was beautiful and everybody was just smiling and everybody like, it was just the atmosphere. I was like, what is this place? Oh, it seemed fake almost. You know, I was like, what is this? And, uh, then I heard the music and, uh, God used the music and the auditorium doors were wide open, you know? And I just remember like leaving the family I was with and just, I kind of just like booked it for the, for the doors. And I stood in the aisleway. And I, and I believe is the first time I heard from God. And, um, I just felt this overwhelming feeling of I'm going to play this music. I'm going to sing this music for the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it is. I don't know how it is. I don't know anything about it, but everybody was standing there with their hands up. And I just remember just, I was, I was awestruck by, by it. And I was like, I need, this is what I've been looking for. Like, that's the feeling that I had. I was like, this is, this is what I've been looking for my whole life. And, um, I swear if somebody was filming me, they would have seen my feet were off the ground yeah. because I, um, I was higher in that moment than I ever, than any of the cocaine or the sex or the alcohol or any of the stuff that I've done, you know? And I was just like, and I remember saying in that moment, like, all right, God, if you're real, like if, if you are who they say you are, then take away these things that I've been doing. I don't want to do these things anymore. I don't want to be this guy anymore. And, uh, I was drinking 17 beers a night. Wow. And, um, you know, all of a sudden that turned to 12, turned to 10, turned to eight, turned to two, turned to, you know what? I'm, I'm good tonight. I don't even want a beer. And my friends, you know, people were like, 
what would you say you ain't going out tonight you ain't you know and then my the swearing too just my my, my mouth was awful the swears just started leaving me and um i was feeling convicted about stuff i was doing and all of a sudden i realized like my life is changing like you know and to and and whoop, and to be and to be honest with you i felt like jim carrey like i'm like you know and liar liar because i'm like you know i'm like looking at this i'm like the pen is blue. like i'm like <laughs> holding on and i'm like trying to lie and i can't i'm trying to like deny and i can't i can't even deny it like i was like i felt so guilty like my conscience was rolled out on a red carpet i couldn't even fake it and um my writing changed my life changed my language changed everything changed and the common denominator for that is Jesus. Isn't it fascinating? I was having a conversation this morning. I heard somebody say something um, last week. And I, and I think this way, but I, I, for whatever reason, I never just thought in such a clear statement. But it was, there's one way to God, but there's a lot of ways to Jesus. Mm. And just listening to your story of some random person right it's like the story of 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 ruth where she just so happened you know uh some people just so happened to have heard you in vermont they just so happened to have moved to nashville as you did a little bit before you they (laughs) just so happened to found out you were in nashville and they call you over dinner and like literally your life has changed from that moment and then god is using you to change other people's lives and it is is it fascinating it doesn't make any sense. It makes zero sense. And in fact, it's just like, that's what keeps me coming back to God is the mystery of God. It's like, there is no, there's no, there's no chance. There's no coincidence. There's no anything. It's like, I keep seeing these things happen over and over again. And I'm like, that, how could, how could that person be perfectly placed here and perfectly placed there? And all of a sudden just, but, but not coincidences, you know, so maybe once in a lifetime. But this is like I'm seeing it happen all around me. And I'm like, okay, I've got no choice but to believe. Yeah. Well, even what else could it be? Even that family to because obviously uh, probably they knew that the path of your life was not a good one at that time. Yeah. But they didn't call you over for intervention. They called you over for dinner. Yeah. You know? It was a meal. Yeah, because because I I I'd, I'd be willing to to bet like if if they had run an intervention on you so to speak, you yeah. might be having this conversation today. No, yeah. we wouldn't. I'd be gone, and because I had and and the stigma of church in a non church place. My thing was this: if I walk in that building, that place is gonna burn down. All the things that I've done, <laughs> and it just it's so it's too holy, it's too special. I'm not good enough. Like, and, and that was my thought about a church. Anyway, it says, no, 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 no. And my other thought was you only go to church because old, old people only go to church because they're just getting ready to die. And that was my thought as, as a, as, as a non-Christian, as a, as an unbeliever, as someone who, who had never heard the gospel. I was like, no, nah. like my gram went to my grandma and grandpa, they went to church, but they're old. So they're just, you know, they're, they're old. And that's what old people do is because they're, they're preparing to die. And like, that's, it's so sad that I thought that way, but that's what I was, you know, I wasn't taught any different, you know, and I don't blame my parents um, or anything because, you know, that generationally speaking, it was passed down from my family. Like there were just things that weren't talked about, you know, and that was, that was obviously one of them in my family that, you know, we just didn't go to church and didn't talk about it and didn't, it wasn't a thing, you know. Incredible. So, yeah. Here, here with Ben Fuller, BenFullerOfficial.com here on Behind the Tune. Shifting gears a little bit, Ben. You know, yeah. you, you started playing shows in 2017, you said. Yeah. But what got you into music to begin with? You know, I it's crazy, man. I didn't um looking back now, um, I always have had a just a love for music of all kinds. I'm a super metal fan. I love um, classical music, John Williams. I love old spirituals. I love uh, Sinatra. I love, I've always just, you know, country music obviously grew up with Steve Warner, Vince Gill, Brooks and Dunn, you know? And so it's like, I, I love all kinds of music and it's, and it just, I think it just, it provided this outlet for me. Um, And once I, I, I guess I always kind of knew that I could sing 
but it never made a big deal out of it, you know? And I always remember listening to, this was back when, uh, you know, we had the little Walkman CD players, the anti-skip, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Oh, and so yeah. I, would, I, would, I would set that on my lap and put a CD, you know, mom would come back from Walmart with a CD and I would remember, you know, listening to the CDs. And if I could sing like them, um, it was like I was on the radio, you know? So if I could try to mimic who, who I was listening to or whatever it was, it was almost like I'm singing and it's coming through my ears. And I felt, I, I don't know. I just, I kind of felt cool, you know, and yeah. it made me feel, made me feel cool. And I was like, dang, this, maybe, maybe someday that this could happen, you know, but it never really dreamed. It never was like a, I don't know. It never was really a huge dream of mine. I wasn't like, Oh, I need to make, I need to do records and go to Nashville and I need to be on the radio. And it was never a dream. You know, I, I want to play the Opry. Like, you know, I've, it's, it never has been a dream of mine. It's always just like, no, I've always just loved singing. And I've always just loved, I've, I've always just loved people, yeah. you know? And uh, so God knew though, that if I could start, if I could go through these things that I went through, you know, a lot of days I feel like Job, you know, where the devil comes up and, you know, God's like, have you considered my faithful servant, Benjamin? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and then the devil just takes, and the devil goes, oh, yes, I have. You know, oh, I love your son, Benjamin. <laughs> you know, let's put some girls on his Instagram and let's, let's, you know, make his voice hurt from singing too much. And so I feel like they're constantly like on the phone with each other. And, and I'm in this tug of war with the devil and God, you know. Um, but it's, it's once I, I believe that once I finally recognized, um, who he is and that he, and that he loves me, um, that I, that I start, if I could start singing for him, then everything, everything has changed in my life. So sticking yeah. with you talking about CDs and your Walkman, all that kind of stuff. Do you remember yeah. the first records you bought with your own money? Oh my gosh. You know, I, I honestly remember, you know, I mentioned Brooks and Dunn, but I honestly remember the Brooks and Dunn album, like the greatest hits with the horn. They had the cattle horns on the front. It was like this black, but it had a texture to the, to, to the, uh, to, to the, uh, the, the fold in the center. And you could almost feel like leather, but it had the bull horns. And so it was like, I think it was Brooks and Dunn greatest hits. I think that might've been like one of the first, um, albums that I remember buying and holding and reading and reading the lyrics and like learning every song to. Um, and I like, and it's so funny because now it makes so much sense to me when I got signed with Sony Provident, they um, had me go visit this amazing woman, Diane Sheets, who's a vocal coach. And they're like, we're just not sure where the Southern drawl is coming from. <laughs> like you've got some kind of, you're from Vermont. Like I remember my a and is like, you're from Vermont, bro. Like, I don't know where the Southern thing's coming from, but like, I'd like you to go see this vocal coach and just see what happens. And she actually like pulled, it was there. It was more like therapy. But what I had realized is years and years and years and years of singing like, and trying to be like somebody else, Brooks and Dunn, AKA yep. I could, my Marie, you know, I could, I could start to, all of a sudden I started talking with it and I started acting like I was, Southern. And I started, yeah. I, you know, if I could, if I could sing country music, I could sing like, and I could like play the part. And so what, what Diane helped me find was myself mm. and, and, and my true voice. Mm -hmm. And uh, then that's when all these songs just, you know, I wrote 117 songs in seven months well, and uh, all these songs just started coming out and, and it was my voice, you know, not, and not this guy that I was pretending or trying to, to, yeah. to impress people with. You know? Well, listen, well, listen, man, you know, a lot of hours out there, those cows, they don't talk back. <laughs> That's what you I'm gotta, saying. You got to do what you got to do, you know? I so, know. You know. You know, I like to say this, Austin. I'm a true cowboy, not because I've never ridden a horse in my life, but I have ridden more cows. <laughs> I have literally, I've literally mounted bareback cows and ridden them, but I've never ridden a horse in my life. But I like to consider myself a true cowboy. You know Listen, what I mean? When Makes these when these music days are over, all right, <laughs> many years in the future, maybe uh, you just start a cow riding business. That's right. Everybody's Praise got God. horseback riding, but cowback Pra riding. Praise God. I can see, yeah, and I could see myself out there in the corral looking at my watch, going, 
Well, I've been waiting all day for somebody to show up and ride. <laughs> Ain't nobody. <laughs> nobody <laughs> nobody wants to ride a cow. <laughs> They're too slow, Austin. I think it's just like. I don't, <laughs> Oh, nobody, nobody, nobody would show up. But anyway, listen, when people yeah. listen, we just came up with a million dollar idea. I think we'll see. Mm, mm-hmm. I mean, Praise God. Million dollars, losing we'll yeah, see. we would lose a lot more than that. All yeah. right. So keep it in, keep it in, <laughs> in that vein. You mentioned some, several of the influences you listen all over the map, you know? Yeah. Fascinating. You know, yeah. if you could open up for anybody and think wow. in terms of like, you get to be just present, you know? Yeah. You could open up for anybody, dead or alive. Oh, who would it be? Oh my gosh! Isn't that, un- isn't that such an unfair question? That's an unfair question. Um, I, you know, wow. I don't know music like dead. I, boy, that's a tough one. I think um, I would want to be an opening act for, and this is this is this is funny because he's not even a musician. I want. I would want to be an opening act for Robin Williams, uh, if I could like just do some music before Robin Williams, because I know Robin struggled with a lot of things that I struggled with, mm-hmm. and it's like so. I think of that often. I, I, I really wish, you know. I, anyway, I have a special place in my heart for Robin um, because I get the creative side and I get the crazy side, but I also get the like the highs and the lows and the roller coaster um, musically. This is also crazy. I don't know what my infatuation with Bring Me the Horizon is, but I love that band and and I pray for Ollie Sykes and, and um the lead singer and uh they're they're from the UK, you know. And um I just yeah, whatever it is about them, I don't know. I love their music, I love the melodies. Um, you know, I think their album has a pen one of their one of their recent <laughs> albums has a pentagram on the front. And it's just like I, I, I listen to the songs from uh, a, a, a believer standpoint, from a Jesus standpoint, and I hear I hear pain. I hear heart. I hear crying out. I hear um, desperation, you know, and, um, and it's and it's and it's beautiful, you know, because I've felt all those things and I continue to feel all those things. So I would love they did an album at Royal Albert Hall and um I would, and, and it's classical music. They had this orchestra behind them. And I love the rock music also. And so like a symphony and this rock music, it's like the, the mix between the two is just, it's unbelievable really. And the record, they have that live out al- live album and the record is unbelievable. And um, I wish I could have been a fly on the wall, wall in that room and just listened and just, just been there. But um yeah, I don't know. I had a dream. It's funny. And the reason why it's on my heart is I had a dream the other night that uh, I was talking to the boys. And um, I don't know if I was in the UK or wherever, but we were around a table and I told them my testimony and I told them my story. And I told them about the cocaine that I've done and the alcohol that I've done and the women that I've slept with and all the things that I've done and the wrong that I've done. But I've told them about Jesus, about a light, a savior that that uh, that has come for me, that has changed me. And uh, but, you know, here's the truth of it. Four weeks ago, I wanted to kill myself and I was in a really, really, really bad place. I had double pneumonia. I was just hurting. Um, I was confused and the devil came for my life. And what I found is the only thing that I found is the word of God. Scripture is the only thing that can make the devil flee. And that's what he brought to me in there. And so I turned into Matthew and when Jesus went from the water to the wilderness When he went from the water to the wilderness, the first thing he was was tempted, right? The devil shows up and hates his guts. And what did Jesus use to get him away from him? And that was just the word of God. No, it is written that I shall worship my God. It is written that I'll worship him alone. That's it. Not you. Bye bye. And off goes Satan. And that's it. Because he goes, shoot, he knows the truth. Mm -hmm. And so, like, I've seen myself telling those boys, you know, and uh, but yeah, I love. Maybe someday. I don't know. Maybe someday I'll meet him. Maybe someday I'll tell him my testimony. But um, I visit a lot of prisons and do a lot of meet a lot of rough people that have been through a lot of things that I have. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, God has allowed me, you know, given me the, the tattoos and the, the story and the look and the, the, the stuff to just the believability, you yeah. know, factor. So, 
Wow. Yeah. Ben Fuller, Ben Fuller official dot com here on behind the tunes. Ben, getting ready to wrap up here in just a few minutes. There's a few things like live music. It's incredible gifts. Yeah. But there's some goofy stuff that happens along the way too. Yeah. Do you have a most embarrassing on stage moment that sticks out to you? Um, oh my gosh. I think I uh I, I this is this is ridiculous, but I I'm trying to figure out if I should dance or not because I've got this little jig thing that I do when I get walking across the stage, and I kind of got this like it might be a little chicken thing I don't know that I do across the stage, and so I found myself doing that one night, like tripped on my guitar cord coming across. And almost fell, but like somehow made it look good. What people didn't realize, I ripped my pants up underneath my butt. And so, and no one saw, I don't think, but but I hit it so well that I just kept the chicken thing going. Yeah. And so now I'm like, I'm really apprehensive on dancing and, and moving. Like, I don't know, I'm 6'3 and 230 pounds. It's like, should I be dancing across <laughs> the stage? I'm not Justin, I'm not, you know, I'm not Justin Bieber. I don't have the moves like Jagger and it's just kind of like I, I don't you know anyway so I'm trying to figure that out but I was pretty I was pretty embarrassed I was like shoot um my pants ripped and I tripped but I made it I watched the video back and I made it look like like I I would knew what I was doing ish and so anyway I'm I think that's probably one of the most I have never fallen off a stage or I don't get that crazy um, but yeah I'm so I'm I guess I'm just figuring out whether I should keep dancing or not <laughs> well listen <laughs> Put me in team dance. Let's I'm on God. team dance. All for, right. I'll keep for it a up. lot of reasons. For a All lot right, of I'll reasons. Work on I think it. And they, the content we get from that may be worth it's, it at the end anyway. Yeah, you're right. I'll be on worship fails is what it'll be. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you'll either, well, see, look, you'll either be really great at it and like, wow, or things yeah. will happen. That'll be wow, too. And just to, yeah, to it'll no, compare no to somebody who really can. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, wrapping up yeah. here, Ben Fuller on Behind the Tunes. Ben. I like to end with a little rapid fire. You got your game face on? Let's do it. All right. What's your favorite junk food? Oh, my gosh. I think um, Twix. I love Twix. Do you remember when there used to be all kinds of different flavors of Twix? No. There used to be like cookies and cream. Uh, 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 um, shoot. I know, peanut butter. Maybe peanut butter still. Did I miss that? I guess so, man. Yeah. I must have missed it. I'm just talking like. Okay. That's why. The gold wrapper Twix, I'm a sucker for. I go right for them. If I go to a gas station, I'm like, I'm going to put that in my little bag for later. And yeah, Twix is my sort of a little guilty thing. Listen, if I run across the cookies and cream, it'll be very old and not any good, but I'll buy it for you. What's your your favorite ice cream flavor? Uh, Strawberry ice cream, hands down. Name one of the seven dwarfs. Uh, Sleepy. If you had to change your first name, what would you change it to? Oh my gosh, that's a really hard one. Um, oh my gosh, I've never even thought of this. Eli, maybe <laughs> Eli, Eli Fuller. Maybe, I, I've always loved Eli. That works. Yeah. If right. uh, what color is your toothbrush? Um, it's white. In the movie about your life, the Ben Fuller story, what actor would play you? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um. What's his Ryan Reynolds? Oh, <laughs> praise God! I don't know. Maybe he's got like a little funny and a little. He's a little witty and a little, you know. And the, and the ladies love him. That's what always. That's, that's right. Like, that's where the guys usually go. It's like some handsome guys. Like, well, I get that's that. That's right. I should have said Chris Farley. But he's not. He's not. Praise God, he's also not with us anymore. But I would love Chris could play Ben. Like, bad guy, you play it all the time, you know? He could reenact the dancing thing. All that would That's work. That's right. That's, but hey, yeah, never, never mind. If you could, Praise uh, God. If you could be any Marvel character, who would it be? Oh boy, I'm not a. Um, let's Wolverine. I'm not. Are you not a Marvel person? Like, or like, I'm like, not a Marvel person, but I just had to think about how cool it would be to have like, you know, a made holy like, you know, like the little, 
<laughs> you, you know, you annihilate people. <laughs> I could no. I was thinking like opening up fan mail. I was trying to go Jesus with this, Austin. <laughs> I could be like, <laughs> you know, I could. No, I'm just kidding. I don't get any fan mail. So anyway, continue. <laughs> no yeah. letters anymore. What's your favorite <laughs> board game? <laughs> um, I would say shoots and ladders. Do you remember that game? You gotta be back? kidding me. You gotta be kidding me because I interviewed David Leonard, who is an what? awesome not an hour ago and he said the same thing i was just with david leonard yesterday afternoon and we just were recording some music together and i swear we did not talk about shoots and ladders i love david i can't believe two people he's in south carolina right now he's on tour with with kane and, and uh and katie uh nicole and so we just that's crazy incredible wow yeah that's Man. why we work together i gotta go we play know each other. it i gotta go play it <laughs> favorite cartoon growing up <laughs> Um. Oh my gosh, Flintstones! I just uh, love the Flintstones. Classic. Yeah, it's a great one. Yeah. Would twelve-year-old yeah. Ben Fuller think you're cool today? Um. Yes. Absolutely. I would. I would. Yeah. Absolutely. I think so. And last but not least, but something you hate that everyone else loves. Um. I think playing by the rules. I think. I think going. I think playing by the rules. I think when when somebody tells me something and they say, "Hey, yeah, you, you have to do this and this and this." I do that and that and that. <laughs> and it's like, and, and my man, you can ask my manager. You can ask both my managers. You can ask the label. I just don't. I've always, I, I think, I think it's this Austin. I've never taken the easy road. And so I'm, I'm always that. like, I'm always looking for other ways to do things and try to be different. You so. are, we are kindred spirits here. We are. I can tell. A week ago, my wife showed me a meme, had Yoda in it. I don't know why Yoda was in it, but it said, what just happened was illegal, but it's fine. And she said, "This reminds me of you." I was like, "I don't know. I don't know if that's good." What? I don't. I can. I don't know it. either. As long as we didn't end up in prison, I mean, we're good, right? I mean, as long yeah. as it doesn't. I mean, as long as it doesn't end with bad. Yeah. Hey, listen. Well, look. Next exactly. next time you come through Memphis, we'll find some mischief. All right. We'll just. Dude. We'll just do break all the rules. All Let's right. do that. I mean, and you know what? Breaking all the rules may look like praying for somebody on the street right. corner in, in right. the next, who knows? I mean, maybe, who knows? That's so, right. Man, he's Ben Fuller. BenFullerOfficial.com. Ben, thanks so much for hanging out today, man. It's been a ton of fun. Thanks, Austin. Yeah, you bet. It's been a blast. Thank you so much for having me. You've been listening to Behind the Tunes with Austin Black. You can reach the show at BehindTheTunes at gmail.com. Thank you for listening. And be sure to tune in next time as we go Behind the Tunes.